Hi, transplant friends and every other person. <laughs> um, I'm here to just, I guess, talk about any updates potentially on my condition or anything at all um, regarding transplant. So I made 12 years with my second kidney transplant September 1st of this year. And so far, so good. Um, my blood work has been consistently very normal. I have no true complaints because everything has just been good from the get-go with this second kidney. The first kidney wasn't so lucky because it already was prone genetically to issues anyway. So it was my sister's and we don't have the best genetics on my side of the family. So um, with the first transplant, I had high blood pressure, I had anemia, I had high cholesterol, um, I had osteodystrophy, which is osteoporosis in younger adults or whatever um i had a i had quite a number of of difficulties and situations with my first transplant um however i feel like my life was better after i had it despite the the problems i had um i managed to go to college and stuff and um even graduated with an associate's degree so i mean all of that came with that first transplant and it was my sister so i'll always treasure that moment and i appreciate it um but the second transplant hasn't given me any problems at all as a matter of fact i have no problems sorry guys my uh my toddler is acting crazy so um yeah with the second transplant i have no problems other than low blood pressure which is like it's a plus in the transplant community. I mean, most of us get diagnosed with high blood pressure, so we have to minimize our salt intake. However, when you have low, low blood pressure, you actually maximize the salt intake. <laughs> you increase it, not, not, not beyond a certain level, but you increase it because sometimes, you know, if your blood pressure is too low, you can get dizzy, you can faint, you can black out. Um, you can even catch a seizure. So... With that being said, I, I'm i a salt lover, so <laughs> I I do my intake on that. Um, aside from that, I did see a gynecologist a few weeks ago. Um, I mean, I was desperately due anyway, and it's been like two years since I last saw the gynecologist, I believe. So it was time, and I'm prone to having um, cervical dysplasia and stuff. 80% uh, of Americans do have the HPV virus. Very common, especially when you've been sexually active. So it's a common situation. You can research it. It's even um, prone in skin-to-skin -skin contact. Doesn't have to be sexual skin-to-skin -skin contact. It could be regular skin-to-skin, arm-to-arm. If you have the virus, you can sometimes catch it that way too. So with that being said, um, I have high-risk HPV, which is the cancer kind. So there's there's a, a low HPV, which is more of like the genital warts type kind. And then there's the high-risk one, which is the one I have, which is the cancer kind. So because of that, I have to get a capulscopy done. And a capulscopy is the procedure of removing a piece of the cervix to be able to microscopically observe it and see what cells come so to continue from that hpv situation um that's what's going on with me at the moment so the next step is for me to get the capulscopy done which i explained and um the last time the hpv virus was active for me was i believe back in 20 20 might have been 2013 that my HPV acted up. So when it acts up, you know, that's when you have to, because um, some of you may know, I don't know, that HPV does go away. And someone with not a suppressed immune system, HPV goes away within two years or so. So if I'm lucky, my HPV does go away. But unfortunately, mine reactivates or whatever the case may be and that's what happens and so i was good the last couple of years that i have seen the gyno 
my pap smears came out 100% normal. However, this time, the high-risk HPV. So, I've done a colposcopy before. I've even done something called cryotherapy, which is the freezing of the cervix to remove any damaged abnormal cells, which I've had cervical dysplasia before. And cervical dysplasia is that HPV virus that can lead to cancer. Excuse me. It's blippy. Okay, go. So I've had definitely the cryotherapy too, and I did not like the cryotherapy, to be honest with you. That one was a bit frustrating. I mean, you felt that intense freezing. You know, like, how about when you get a, a menstrual cramp, or if you've had contractions and, had, and have had kids, so that feeling just felt cold, just felt freezing cold, because obviously cryotherapy is um nitrogen so yeah that happened to me and it was pretty yeah it wasn't fun so i'm hoping i don't have to do cryotherapy anymore because that wasn't fun um i mean a colposcopy is not fun either if you kind of just um hold your breath and look away for a minute don't think about it it's really a quick pinch a quick quick pinch um you can always take tylenol prior to the procedure and that would help but aside from that everything else i do have to um i have to go back for a transplant every three months i go get my blood work done to make sure everything's stable as usual so i'm due this month or at the beginning of november for that and that's about it um my kids are doing well as you guys know i have a seven-year-old and a almost three-year-old and they both came out of my transplant and they are healthy great kids you know and they kept my kidney working thank god you know it's a, it's a scary situation and another thing um february of 2020 i did get braces and although my procedure is not complete yet i've had to get a few refinements um i joined a company called bite b-y-t-e and um it's been a good experience despite the constant refinements that i've had to do I've, I've done fifth i've done five refinements i'm on my fifth refinements now and i have like three more weeks to go to finish completely it's just i have this tooth here it's just like it's a very um difficult tooth it doesn't want to budge it doesn't want to straighten so um because of that i've had situations with the bottom but i had really crooked teeth um and I'm proud to announce that I'm pretty much straight and it just feels good to smile. See this tooth here? Or is it this one? I don't even know which tooth it was anymore, but one of these front teeth used to pop out a lot. If you see the videos, the past videos I've done, you'll see it. Um, this tooth popped out a lot, like it was just out here. Um, and then my bottom teeth were really crooked. So I've, I've, I've made a ton of progress and I'm proud to smile feels good to smile and actually have good teeth you know um though although <laughs> in my last dentist appointment i'll also update you guys on that i mean this is all i feel like transplant related i've been going through this since i was 17 so a little bit more than half my life now i've been going through kidney problems and transplant and medications i mean when you take a lot of medication it's gonna do something to your body it's gonna fuck you up in some way or, or whatever but um I went to the dentist and uh these two these two teeth is it i don't know if it's these two or these two anyway i have 50 percent bone loss in two of them 50 percent. that's so scary that means like one day in the future i'm gonna have to remove those teeth because they're gonna have complete bone loss or i don't know root canal or whatever i don't know what happens from there but i do not want to be toothless it's a scary a scary thought and also I sprained my ankle twice this year. So on Mother's Day, I sprained my ankle. Um, I'm four foot ten and a half, guys. I'm a short girl. So I definitely climb counters to reach stuff. I have to. I mean, I can't reach the middle shelf all the time. But, the, I mean, I climbed. I jumped down the wrong way and I landed on like this tilted part of my mat. The kitchen mat. So my ankle kind of tilted with the tilt on the mat. And it just like sprained. And uh, back in 2017, I sprained my left foot outside of the front of my house. Uh, 
that healed pretty easily and it was good and it's strong now but so mother's day i sprained my ankle my right foot and then um the day after independence day this year i sprained the same ankle again yeah mm -hmm. i re-sprained the right ankle it was like eight weeks later i'm sorry not eight weeks yeah it might have been already it might have been eight weeks after i sprained it again because i was running from a wasp hey that's reasonable isn't it and so i had to go to the doctor because my foot was swollen at that point the first time i sprained it you know i took care of it myself i had bandages here i already knew the procedure since i did it with my left but the second time i was like you know what i don't know how to treat this this is a second sprain in a matter of eight weeks so i, I don't know anyway the doctor told me that i would have to go to physical therapy to just practice some exercises because i officially have weak ankles now and when i get older it's going to take a toll on me <laughs> yikes anyway moving forward i'm obviously good now it's been i believe it's been three months at this point a little more than three months since i sprained it twice and it still gets a little bit swollen a little uncomfortable i still have to stretch it here and there to make sure i don't keep it tight uh i don't know i i still haven't seen the physical therapist for it so i should and i'll do that but anyway this is a really long video and i'm so sorry i just wanted to update you guys on this year's situation you know pandemic and everything oh and i got my third booster i got my booster shot which is the third vaccine so i'm fully vaccinated with a booster i was one of probably the first people to get the booster i got it done two days after it was approved or whatever so yeah that's what's going on now guys any questions reach out message message me down below whatever the case i will try to reach out back i am a busy mom understand that but i appreciate you watching this video and thank you